mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your, your mom, mom and dad. dad. See how I do that? See how I clap away from the microphone? So demure, so mindful. Oh. See, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like you other. Like you other girls. Podcasters. I, I, like you other podcasters. You know, I. I don't keep my claps too close to the mic, booming to hurt your ears. I'm very thoughtful, very mindful, very demure. <laughs> what is demure, by the way? Is that like it's, classy? It's what is like, that? Demure is like. I don't know. Ooh, like I'm demure. Oh, like you're I'm very, very elegant. Kind of elegant. Kind of very, very elegant. Oh, we were kind of um, on the front end of that. What do you think about when we were well, talking about elegance? I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> we kind of started <laughs> sure this whole thing when you actually think By about it. By the way, it. so embarrassing. That's how old I am. I just found out about the very demure, very mindful, uh, and this very has cutesy. Been big. And I think it's been blowing up for like months. And here I am. I think yeah. yesterday discovering yeah. it and now I can't stop saying it. But it's just and, and, ironic yeah. because I feel like I'm very much more like very, very uptight, very anxious. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing about me that's spill, like, I spill a lot. <laughs> nothing, very cutesy, very demure. Very, I'm like, no, I'm going to be very wound tight, yeah. uh, very full of nerves, very fearful. <laughs> <laughs> very fearful, very messy, very, what it's, what's like, um, very clumsy. Well, that's me too. <laughs> very messy. Very much the room. Very clumsy. <laughs> very much the room. Yeah, very much the room. <laughs> How is the room going, by the way? Um. Hey, I didn't think that you were going to <laughs> attack me in the first three minutes of this episode. The room is interesting, you guys, because the room, I, I truly <sighs> believe that the room now mm -hmm. is one of these weird, like, First of all, it's a it's a it's a living organism, which is very interesting, because what will happen like is, <laughs> is the the spilling of the room into the hall. Mm -hmm. You will clean. Yes. But like any living organism, like a fungus, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Or a, a vine. Mm -hmm. it, if you don't prune it, it will continue to grow. And what's so interesting is I don't like your gardening science is, examples. What's so interesting about this <laughs> fungus of a room? <laughs> It really is a fungal room when you really think about it. It's a fungal room because what happens is you clean the fungus, the the mold, you know, you spray it down. You, you yeah, There's not you really take mold yet. Okay, you know, everybody, no, no, no. just FYI, there's not fungus and mold happening yet. So let's not actually think that that's the case. We don't know for sure. Okay, well, I, I go in there every everything. once in a while. I venture in, scan, so, scan the mountains of yeah, so piles of things. In our, in our, so what's interesting though is that like any fungus, it's like you'll get rid of what's in the hall, uh -huh. but then like two, three days later, all of a sudden it's like, it's back, but in a new way, like, yeah. oh, new things I've never seen before. Or like, what, so what is that? Is that a, is that like a fun? It, Cause it really is its own beast at this point where it's starting yeah. to create, it's reaching out it's, it's, into the world. It's gotten out of control again, but you know what? I, I told you that uh, I have you a mission. You made a promise and it was a bold promise. And I'll be honest with you, not looking good. Okay, I, I believe in you and I love you, but it is week, not looking by good. By the end of this week, I'm going to have, I'm going to totally have cleared out the room. Yeah. Yeah. That's my promise. It is. I love you. By Monday. I love you so much. Yeah. If you do that, mm -hmm. I gotta come up what with a special. Gonna get me? That's what I said. I'll come up. I'll come up with a special <laughs> what prize. You gonna get me? I'll come up with a special prize. <laughs> okay. Because I have faith in you in a lot of things, yeah. and I'm just gonna be 100 percent honest with you. Mm -hmm. I'm really having a hard time with the faith end of this one. Mm. So, well, if I come up with a good enough prize, do you think it will happen? Diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, diamonds. Diamonds, darling. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that no, I love you, and you have so is, many amazing qualities, and you're an incredible prize person. My prize is and finishing. Is I have to get this done because it really is starting to drive me nuts. You know, I was literally thinking about. So we're going over Jen's hometowns. Yeah. Uh, this episode, and I was thinking about if I was on this show, yeah. that I'd be like, oh my god. Even <sighs> on Love Is Blind, when then they do the reveals yes. of like their apartments yes. or whatever, I'm like, oh my god, if I signed up for something like this. If I didn't take care of the room beforehand, you'd be calling in companies. I would have to I would have to contact a producer beforehand and be like, "Hey, 
you know, sometimes when you all go to a different location, like a different home, yes. you're going to need to do that mm -hmm. for me because I don't need the bachelor walking in mm -hmm. and observing the room. And observing the room. Yeah, it's it's it would be very it would be very funny though room. to have a house that's like immaculate yeah. and then they're like yeah just don't go in that room it's just like storage stuff like oh really and then they go in and then they're like oh they fall in and they never get out it would be very funny like to have that in it's the very show Monica, actually. isn't there an episode of Friends I feel maybe I'm making this up but I feel like there's an episode of Friends where because Monica's so clean she has her like dirty closet yeah. and they open it and, and everything it comes like comes tumbling out. out yes we'll just say that's me even though I'm not super clean. <laughs> Else, Your qualities are far, are far above the simpleness of, of just this. You know what I mean? But thanks for checking in and asking publicly about the room. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, family, <laughs> what it, this is doing is this is called keeping me accountable. And yes, a year and a half ago or what, when we started this podcast, yes. I taught, I revealed the room. Yeah, I made a trailer for it. And you made a trailer like for a, it. you know, a movie poster. And I was like, it's going to get better, I promise. And for like one moment, it, it did get it better. It really did. You went in, you yeah. and your sister went for it. You guys we crushed We went in on it, it. And, and I did really well. Um, and, and we, I it lasted I would how say how long did it last a week maybe well I would say a week again? before it started to grow yeah, yeah a week before like a week before like it started the the mold like not the actual mold but the but the figurative fungus yeah started to grow again yeah. and what's interesting about this fungus is that it is a multiplier so it's it's very quick acting so you have to kill it at its root. Yeah. So I think once that week was over, it was about a week and a half. And then we were back to kind of. Yeah. The, I don't love the details of it. But anyway, <laughs> um, it lasted for a couple of weeks. Let's just say. But anyway, and we'll now check, we're in, back. So this we'll is check in next week about kind of how it's doing. Yeah, maybe we'll, 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 we'll check in next week, perhaps. Maybe if we're this, still maybe married. Maybe the second we'll episode of the week. Yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> Let's yeah, yeah, yeah second yeah, yeah. episode of the week. Let's check maybe in next, next Bachelorette and see how we're doing. What about during Jones season? Maybe finale of Jones season. I like that. Grant or Christmas. You know, it will grant. It'll be after Christmas. Okay, so Grant. Yeah, 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 Grant, Grant. Anyway. Okay, we'll see. Uh, anyway, family, <laughs> good hi. Morning, How good are afternoon, you all doing? Um, welcome to our very demure, very mindful podcast. Yes. So sorry if I say that too much. I'm just learning about it, and I'm an elder millennial. Um, but like I said today, we are going over Jen's hometown recaps. Just FYI, too, uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So typically we would have a second episode this week because we go every other week. But this week, we're only going to have one episode this episode because next week we have two bachelorette recaps uh yes. to do we have the fantasy suite episode and we have the men tell all and we're really excited and about this one because so, we have a lot of so excited to see all of these wild ass men in a room together all i care about is that sam and Devin have not been friendly since then and that they can air it all out. You know what I mean? Yes. I don't want this whole like, we connected out, we had beers, everything's cool now. I'm gonna I want say the this. like, I've been thinking about you every day and this is the moment of my retribution. I'll say this, I did read, I think it was maybe a People article or something about an interview that Devin did on Bachelor Happy Hour, which was I think maybe like a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said he is not friends with Sam Love that. and he does not like Huge him. Fans so of I that. think we're going to have a Stay continued enemies. vengeance going yes. on. Um, but before we officially dive in to um, the recap, girl, I don't think any of these men are ready for commitment, girl. <laughs> I don't think it's one of these men are ready for commitment. And Devin's maybe the most vocal about it, but I do not think he is ready. And I will go into detail about why I felt like his mom gave us some Easter eggs. And I think he likes her, but I also do not think he is ready for commitment. And I don't think any of these men are. Devin's definitely the most vocally ready but he's always the most vocally ready that's you kind know of what the I question mean? Like is he just that guy and it's you also I mean? like you said again i i started this season off being like well you know Devin, he is i don't i'm not a fan but he's entertaining to watch yes. as each episode passes i think it's after you told me that Devin and sam are the same person but just in different mm -hmm. forms mm -hmm. i am so off mm. i am so off I poison the well for and then sure. this man takes her on a run i am way off <laughs> This man has the audacity to take her on a run. Yeah. Well, I want to get into that because it's a very <sighs> interesting. Well, I mean, all these I'd dates walk off right there. say a lot. Well, all these dates did say a lot. They you really know? did. And and what it says to me mm -hmm. generally yeah. is I'm not changing shit for you. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing me and you can join in on that. 
Evan? Not, I want to take you somewhere that will make you happy or show you a good time. Yeah. It's like, I haven't been able to go to my run club in a while mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I miss that thing. Mm-hmm. So you can come. Jeremy and Jonathan were borderline. Yes. But overall, yes. And off of what you're saying, I think the other thing that it screams is just echoing what I'm saying is none of these men are ready for a commitment because there's something about these dates where there was like, listen, I'm not saying you got to, you know, drench someone in diamonds and be bougie, but there's something about like a sweet, thoughtfulness that we've seen time and time again on this show that's called preparation, my guys. And it feels like a lot of people weren't prepping AKA the ultimate lack of preparation, which is when Marcus walked her around a body of water and sat on a bench. I have a lot (laughs) to say about that as well. That's the hometown date. You walk around a body of water and then you sit on a bench. I I have much to say. Prepare, guys. I I want to launch. Oh my gosh. I want to launch. I'm feisty today. I appreciate your I am not demure today. Okay. I'm very not cutesy about these guys very not cutesy about these men um but before we officially dive in we gotta take a quick pause family listen uh these men like we were saying we're taking jen on runs to the field walks around the bodies of water and with all that i am just hoping that her feet were feeling good Mm. because i know mine sure are with my vionic walk max sneakers baby for him for her for everyone they are perfect for all day wear staying active or your everyday go-to they have been my everyday go-to truly the moment i put them on my feet listen the moment i put them on my feet i felt the difference like i felt the science It's pretty wild. I don't even quite know how to put it into words. I've been in my walking era lately and my feet were aching. They were paying the price a bit. And then I got my Vionic Walk Max sneakers and I was shook. My feet feel so good all day long. It's that science-led design informed by biomechanics. The balance of max cushioning and stability optimizes your natural stride. And they are so cute too. Look, I have them on. I have the cream tangerine, the cream tango tangerine. I'm not very flexible, so you're not going to get a great view. <laughs> great color. But here we are. That's so cute. Yes. The, the comfortability. Yes, extremely comfortable. It's true. I have a pair as well. And feeling the science the moment I slipped my feet in was pretty incredible. Um, Vionics exclusive Viomotion technology is what sets them apart. This exclusive podiatrist design technology features unmatched uh, underfoot contours, providing stability and support through every single stride. They began by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to engineer shoes that leave you feeling energized and confident every single day. Unparalleled confidence and comfort. Okay, the comfort. Wow, wow, wow. I genuinely wear them every day. My walks, shopping, out with my friends, running around the park with Ember, all of it, and my feet feel good even at the end of the day. When I have these shoes on, I never have that like, you know, the end of the day, you got to take your shoe off and you're like, yes. oh, thank it's God. Yes. Thank God. I, the other day, I legitimately, true story, fell asleep in my Vionic Walk Max sneakers because it was a long day. I was tired. I lay down in bed, woke up like three hours later with the shoes on. Didn't even notice they were yeah. there. <laughs> right. So I love I'm that. just saying, okay. Um, so check out their website. The shopping experience is a 10 out of 10 and they have so many cute shoe styles and your feet will thank you. They even offer a 30 day guarantee. Wear them, love them or return for a full refund within 30 days. Use code MOMDAD at checkout for 15% off your entire order at www.vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Code MOMDAD at www.vionicshoes.com. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. I'm going to be very comfortable this entire podcast. I was with people I might not be walking around. But they're still comfy. Oh Love man, it. I wish I was more flexible. <laughs> you guys gotta see these shoes. Like, check these out. I'm like shaking, trying to lift. <laughs> Cleaning the room and Listen, stretching. Listen, we're, like, we're not even getting. Cleaning we're not the room and stretching. These Those are the goals for you know 2025. 2027. Well, that's what Go we're ahead. doing. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so can I talk about? This run situation? Yeah. Okay. So uh, first up on the list of hometown dates is Devin. We're in Houston. It is his one-on-one time before we meet the fam. Yes. And please go ahead. Okay. So this was the most egregious (laughs) of all of them because first of all, 
the reason why it was egregious is because unless you're like a professional athlete, yeah, working out is like kind of, I don't want to say a private thing, but it's also very like, <sighs> I have my thing, you know, I do my thing or, yeah. and then running is very much like, did they discuss running? You know what I mean? Like, was this something that they share a lot? Did they talk about how much they love running? Clearly, I will say this. Jen is clearly an athletic a queen. Very, yes. Like, she's always down for the athletics. Sure. But still, right. this is your, like, one moment in your hometown. Well, first of all, I don't believe that 80% of the people were a part of that run club. Those were extras. Over, those, over were, those were, like, producers' on, friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, people had gold chains on. <laughs> Like running. one guy was in a gold chain, like, yeah, that was definitely like hair a gel and gold chain. Like a hundred percent is not a part of the run club. Or is he trying to get all like jazzed for the camera? That's an option. That's an yeah. option. Tony wanted to like really yeah, stick Tony's out. Like, just he wanted his case. moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess for me, what was weird about it was like, clearly they're in Austin, right? Or was it Houston? Houston sorry, Houston. Houston's a very like humid place. And it very gets very hot. Hot and muggy, yeah. And you could tell they probably ran like a quarter mile, right? They probably did some sort of loop. But they ran the entire Yeah, they ran a marathon. City parameter. But like my thing was this, it's like they're immediately sweating. Drenched. Right? They're yeah. immediately like they ran far enough mm -hmm. to where it was hard to talk. Like you could even hear her being like, so like, what do you, this is really cool. Like you could even hear her. They, they ran, it wasn't like they ran 10 feet. They ran far enough to where like the breath was going and they ran far enough to where he looked like he fell in a lake. Because <laughs> the amount of sweat was off If you would have the rails. wrung out his, you know, Devin it Hart's Jen shirt. It would have been like. It would have filled yes, up like, you a know, a, an Aquafina. Like, so my thing bottle. is like, if this was his idea, he did not think this through. He did not think it's not a good time to talk. Also, you, the, you know where the last place you want to make out is? When you're out of breath. When you're out of so breath. So when they also, stop, make out, and then they're clearly tired, been running, and then they'll like sit down drenched. I'll be real with you though. I would have stopped to make out so I could have stopped running. Yes. Because like you said, how am I supposed to talk without vomiting blood? Yes. For me, honestly, yes. like, you know, I my cardio is a one. Yeah. Add it to the list. My cardio is a one. Okay. <laughs> and if I go like a hundred feet, I can't speak anymore. Yes. And I'm supposed to engage with maybe your friends on this run. Running is one of the worst things no. in the whole world. I it hate is it so much. Horrific. Shout out to people who love it. I wish I loved running. My I don't believe God. them. I don't believe them. <laughs> I think it's like a, I'm better than you thing because running is pure torture. Like there's literally nothing good about it. Your knees hurt. Your back hurts. Mm -hmm. you're, you're breathing hard the whole time. It is pure torture. And so for me, I don't know if this was a flex, as the misstep. Yeah. I don't know if it was a producer thing, but... For me, if I was Jen, I would have been very disappointed. Imagine you're good at running. That feeling of just like being able to fly. I know. I'm I think that's more what it so is. I'm jealous. so bad at it. So it just pisses me off that God, people are so good at it. But no, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. Now I will say he pulled very much like knows what he's doing in this show card by having all of these people, sure. whether they were producer plants or real friends of his, he had then the opportunity to have them talk afterwards yes. to hopefully, you know, say quality things about yes. himself. And like, these are my friends. These are my friends. Da, 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 da. During this portion when he's absolutely drenched in sweat, he says something like, well, she loves me and catches himself. I had a feeling about that too. I'm like, you know what would have been really cute is if he would have by accident slipped and said, I love her. But the fact that he by accident slipped and said, she loves me, I would have been like, Monsieur, no. Yeah, easy. I let easy up. Okay, I'm the bachelorette and you wait for my cues when I let you know, you know, perhaps an episode before the finale that I'm in love with you. Yes, but when you talk as much as him, it's you're bound <laughs> to say true. stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like he does a really good job for the amount he talks. Yeah. To not have slip up as as much as you know, most true. people would. Like it is a constant stream with him. At least that's you know maybe the editing is yeah, in his favor. Yeah, probably cut out Who some knows? of that. That's Who true. Knows? That's I'm, true. I, I'd be curious to find out if the editing is in his favor or against him. It seems like they like him. I feel like they. That's like the him vibe too. I get for sure. Mm -hmm. I would love to see the unedited tapes because mm -hmm. he does constantly talk about how he never stops talking and the guys confirm that. But yes. I'd love to hear the unedited stream of consciousness happening all the time. Like the ITMs just going, 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 going. They're just like, well, got to delete that. I did like gotta his dog, that. though. Oh, Charlie. Charlie was very cute. 
Charlie and they really the, they gave Charlie some really good looks. I was gonna say, you know what? I really appreciated the the whole team, the editing team yes. that kept zooming up when they were talking and instead of focused on Charlie chewing his ball. And Charlie lift. can move for an old dog. I know. I'm proud of Charlie. I'm proud of Charlie. Charlie was very sweet. Charlie had a lot of gusto mm -hmm. for an old gray a old gray pup. And Jen's talked about how much she loves animals. Mm -hmm. So that was a good move on Devin's part to be like, this is the love of my life. Yes. Meet my dog, my love, Charlie, because mm -hmm. he knows that Jen is a big animal mm -hmm. fan. And Charlie did a good job staying because <laughs> what they did was they go, oh, I, want, I, I want you to, I want to introduce you to the other like woman in my life or something like that. Yeah. It was like Charlie. And then Charlie was waiting, sitting with ball in mouth. Very, very good dog. Very, very cutesy. Very demure. Very demure, very cutesy. Very mindful of Charlie to then also sit behind them while yes. they were having their conversation and, and just ball. be chewing on the ball. Something our dogs would never do. No, absolutely not. They'd be just all over all oh of us. <laughs> Making a strong impression yes, immediately. Yes. Um, but he lets Jen know before they officially go and meet his family mm -hmm. that uh, his dad's going to be there, who we learned a little bit about in his one-on-one -on -one who hasn't really, who's been in and out of his life a yes. lot. Um, and then also, you know, mom, grandparents, all this. And he lets her know that in general, his family has had a rough time in love and relationships. Yes. Um, except for now, his mom is married to his stepdad, who he forgot about his stepdad later, but apparently they have like a great relationship. Um, <laughs> like that's not going to come up at Christmas dinner. Something it's so like, funny oh, about saying like, interesting, you forgot my, me. My, my mom and dad has been tumultuous and, you know, my dad's been in and out of my life and my mom's had a really tough time with relationships. So anyway, it's like, Todd's like, what? <laughs> No, he said the later. He's like, Todd's just kind of like, love. dude, are we cool? Because like, and then he I forgets just keep, Todd later yeah, he outside literally the house. Forgets it, like, and she's that like, he's and your stepdad, and he's, he's like, like, oh yeah, yeah I forgot about Todd. <laughs> he, I, he's kind of furniture at this point. Like Todd's serving furniture. I'll be honest with you, because clearly not a big impact on Devin's life. Or Devin was something. You know what I mean? Not serving furniture. He's serving sofa. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> but. Devin is saying that he really, he wants to be the change in his family. Right. And he wants to make them proud. But simultaneously, what he's saying is he's like, hey, I really want to get my family's take and thoughts and approval um, because they've really struggled in relationships. Plus, he says, if they don't like her that could change things like severely for him. Yes. So he went as far as not to just be like, I value their opinion, but like if they don't mess with her, I'm kind of like possibly off her. I'm like, well, that's a lot of weight. It's a lot. And I'm going to say this. This is no shade to people and our families who have struggled in relationships. Let me tell you about my family. Okay. <laughs> so this is coming from someone who the relationships have not been successful in my family at all. Because my family's relationships have never really been successful, I value and love my family, but they are not the people who I am going to to make sure that they're like, yes, this is the person. Right. Because I'm like, well, the track record hasn't been great. So that, I'm going to go inward a little more. That Maybe would talk to be my therapist. Like, <laughs> that would be like, I'm starting a business. I'm going to my friend, Kevin. Yeah who has failed every business he's ever tried to sure. get business advice. Mm -hmm. It's just a little like, what? Yeah. I want to start running. I'm going to go ask my friend who's never ran me how to run. <laughs> you know, it's just a little like, running. it was a little weird how much she put in his family's weight while simultaneously making it a big point at how bad they are at what he's cares about their opinion for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's one thing if he didn't say it and then you find out later, but it's another thing to be like he constantly talked about how bad his family is at relationship and then like but doubled it up with and it's super important I get their advice on it. It's like Yeah. I have to say this overall, okay? Every single one of these men needed so much yeah. reassurance from their family. Like I get caring what your friends and family think we've had this converse conversation before obviously you know if your fam is off you don't have a close relationship then it's your chosen family like i totally think it's important to hear the words out of people around you who love and care about you you know what i mean because sure. sometimes they're able to see something that you know we might be missing whatever but the level to which every single one of these men was like, I don't know how I feel about Jen and I can't even tell her that I'm starting to fall in love with her. 
until my family looks at me and not just says we like her. All these guys sat in front of their parents and said, do you think I should be with her? Like, please tell me, should I be with her? It was one of the wilder things. I don't think we've ever seen this where like all of them did that. And like major mama's boy energy. And I oh, think, for sure. yeah. and, and again, I'm not talking shit on that. It's more of like, for me, if I was Jen, I'd be like, I have to compete. Like if me and her, if me and this guy get in a fight, yeah, I know he's going back to mom. And now I have to kind of worry about like getting on mom, getting good on mom's side. Like you're yeah. kind of bringing, like, I feel like when you have a mama's boy, who's like really intense mama's boy, yeah. you're kind of marrying him 0.5 mom. Of course. Because that's the other woman in his life. And I, even beyond that, I felt like it was just family in general, but I think it was more connected with the fact that we have a group of men again, who are ready to commit and are very indecisive there. It's, it's like, Hey, the amount of which you ha again had to say, please give me the answer, whether it be mom or not. It was just like, I need you to hold my hand and tell me exactly what to do. And the moment that their moms or whoever said, hey, I think that you should go for it and jump in. Every guy sat down with her outside and said, Whew. This was really necessary thank for me. Thank God you say thank, you're cool with Thank it. God. Thank God. My mom told me, my family told me that it's good. So now I'm going to let you know, I'm starting to fall in love with you. And then poor Jen, with almost again, all of the guys, almost, had to go in and literally be sitting with the family and being like, almost like begging, like, please tell me that you can see that your son is interested in me. Like, please give me a sign that your son wants to be with me because I can't read their energy and they're not communicating with me. So will you let me know? Is this how they normally are? Are they ready for marriage? Like Jen had to go in and literally do like detective work <laughs> amongst the families to be like, give me a couple hints that they're ready for marriage. Wild. Very interesting. Never seen it before, I don't think. Maybe it's just because I don't, you know, it's not as like much my world, but like, to crave their approval so heavily seems like a tough one for relationships. Yeah. Seems like a gauntlet to get through for both people. But I really, th I, I do though really think that the energy in which a lot of these men were like, please tell me what to do. I don't even know if it was like I need my family's approval over they're not ready to commit. Like they would have asked anyone. Yeah. A friend. Yeah. Right. Family, whatever. It's like, I'm not ready to commit, but I don't know if I want to leave the show. Yeah. So. That is interesting. That is interesting. You say that. Yeah. The, the not leaving the show. Cause I want, I want to continue on. I kind of want to bring that, that back energy a little bit. Listen, yeah. I'm here for Jonathan. Jonathan is the one guy I'm here for because even though he did the whole like, please tell me what to do, which I have thoughts about, but he was like the person who was very, very honest about where he felt. And I don't think Jonathan is ready to get engaged. And I wonder if Jen's going to be okay with that. If she's okay, maybe walking away from the show just in a relationship. But Jonathan's the only one I trust. Everyone, I'm like, I can't believe the words you're saying. I don't know me how to feel either. about you. You make me uneasy. Jonathan feels like what you see is what you get. Yeah. He seems honest. Everyone else, I'm kind of like, you're giving me salesman energy. Like, I don't know if you're selling me something. I don't know if you're, like, I, I can't He's trust it. He's the only one I trust, too. Yeah, yeah. And he feels very honest. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if Grant was here, everyone? Oh, my gosh. The that Grant's <laughs> gone is just absolutely insane. But whatever. Let's continue. <laughs> our bachelor yeah, yeah, yeah. which I mean, by the way since grant was announced let me tell you i've had a few people who haven't um you know necessarily messaged me in a while who know i'm in the recapping space i'm like i have no power in this show but they're not really big bachelor bachelorette watchers who have reached out to me who have been like so um auditioning for grant season do you think you could you i'm like now all these women yeah, are yeah, coming yeah, up the yeah. woodworks they're like so this grant guy huh oh yeah it's gonna be 
mental. I sure hope during the mental all they give Grant like fanfare yeah. because it's been so quiet and this man deserves yeah, some he, proper yes. fanfare. Okay. Yes, agreed. Anywho, um, let's keep getting into the Devin portion because I have a very a big note okay. that really stuck out to me. Okay. Um, but before let's take another quick pause. Okay, so listen up, fam. Obviously, it's hometown week and you're seeing Jen bring over flowers and things for the family. It's very nice. But I'll tell you this. If I was on the show, the gift I would bring would win me this show. Okay, if I was one of the contestants, I would win this show. I'm convinced of it because it's simply the best gift. I'm talking about aura frames. Okay, talking gifts, fam, there are 365 days in a year, which means there are 365 days when you might need to buy someone a birthday present or a gift in some form and finding the perfect gift for everyone that can take some serious work and take weeks. You can simplify the process and know you are giving someone something special with an aura digital picture frame. These are incredible. They are Awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, awesome. ranked the number one digital picture frame by a wire cutter. Aura frames are easy to set up, update, and enjoy. Plus, Aura frames can be preloaded with photos and gifts messages. So whether you're giving the frame to your best friend, your dad, your Instagram free aunt Katie, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can be sure your gift is personalized just for them. Every Aura frame comes with unlimited storage, so you can preload the frame with as many photos as you want. All you need is the free Aura app and a Wi-Fi connection, and they've made it so streamlined. It takes two minutes to set up, no memory card required. The Aura app is beyond user friendly and much more. Um, Aura Frames specifically holds a very special place in my heart. I think we've gotten an Aura Frame for almost every member of yeah. our family over mm -hmm. the years. Um, and one in particular that stands out is we gave my Nana, mm -hmm. who has since passed away, an Aura Frame. And it was her most favorite thing ever. And what was so amazing is that, you know, we all were able through the Aura app to update photos constantly. So my Nana would be sitting in her favorite chair and she'd have the Aura frame next to her and she'd be getting like in real time photos of Ember or us running yeah. around when we couldn't be with her. Um, and sorry, I'm going to cry. And after she passed away, we actually kept her Aura frame. And so then we have it. Mm -hmm. And when I walk by, it makes me feel so special to mm -hmm. feel like I'm almost with her seeing mm -hmm. what she was watching because every time when I walked into her house, she'd be sitting next yeah. to her, her Aura frame it. and just watching it. And now that we have it still, this memory, I'm able to see these photos that we were sending her and feel like connected with her. Um, Sorry, but mm. it was just like it was really special. It was so special, and I I love Aura frames as a gift because I just feel like again the ability to like safely and securely be sending in real time photos and videos. Yeah. You can stay super connected yeah. with people that you love, even if you're not with them in person. So, yeah, um, think it's the best gift ever. And right now, Aura is having their very first friends and family sale, and we've got an exclusive offer just for our listeners. For a limited time only, you can get $35 off their best-selling frame by visiting AuraFrames.com and using the promo code MOMDAD at checkout. That's A-U-R-A-Frames.com, promo code MOMDAD. This is the best offer of the season, so do not miss out. Uh, again, it's just, it's I, awesome. I think it's the best gift that yeah. I can think of. Mm -hmm. And we've given them to everyone that we love in our life. And I don't know. It's really special. And now having yeah. Nana's in our house, it's yeah. just, it's a, it's a real gift. So, anywho, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little bit of an emotional turn there. Okay, sorry. Had to collect myself there for a moment. Take, take a quick pause. But back to Devin's family. So yeah. the meeting of the family, um, you know, they, it's grandparents, Phyllis was there. We had, we had the whole family mm -hmm. was popping in the house. They talked about his uh, stripping the G string in front of Phyllis, yep. who I was like, family. Appalled. <laughs> Grandpa was appalled. <laughs> He's like, doesn't surprise me at all. I won't be watching that episode. <laughs> um, but I wanted to hit, obviously we had the different conversations. Yeah. We had Devin's conversation with his dad and then with his mother and Jen talking with um, Devin's, um, Devin's mom. But a few things that really stood out to me during these conversations was one, the thing that Devin kept bringing up is that he's like, I'm in love with her, Yeah. but I don't want to say it because what if then she says it to someone else? 
And that was kind of the big focus that mm-hmm. I found to be interesting. It wasn't like, what if I say that I'm in love with her and then she's not in love with me and she's in love with someone else and I'd be heartbroken. The big, it felt like the big energy was if I say I love you and she says I love you to someone else. It felt a little pride centered to me. Maybe I'm just digging because I have, you know, feelings about him, but it felt a little pride oriented. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's too it feel so much like I'm gonna be heartbroken. It was more like that's um, my girl, and I don't want her saying it to anyone else. Oh, interesting. Like maybe a little yeah, like okay. jealous. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that. Uh, you know, I look at it like I don't like being out of control. Oh, Devin saying mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. it's like if I put myself out there and it's not returned, then I am no longer in control of this situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not able to kind of predict what will happen yeah so i think it's kind of not being used to not knowing what's going to happen next yeah energy which i can understand but at the same time isn't this what this show is Mm -hmm. and you are competing true it's not a one-on-one thing Mm -hmm. it's like you know this is the case yeah and you always see like hometowns is when people start to kind of spiral you start to see the like this is real now yeah and what I was kind of just okay with in the house is this kind of game is now becoming real. It also felt like he dates a lot. Yeah, it did because kind of. that's kind of the game, right? Yeah. I'm not going to tell her I like her first. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to text her back right away. Yeah. I'm going to wait two days. That's my rule. You know, all those kind of things that people do. Yeah. He also it, did talk about showing up to the house and his family never seeing him in a situation where he was just being himself. Right. Even though he had said that he hadn't brought someone home for a long time, I don't think. But yeah. anyways, that was confusing but to me. It kind of felt like he's been dating. in the dating game. Yeah, sure. Where you're playing games sure. and you're like, you don't give too much and you scare him away and all this mm-hmm. stuff. So it felt like he was kind of in that world. Yeah. But he was out of his depth. Yeah. The other thing, I, you know, that makes sense to me. And the other thing that I, maybe again, I'm digging. Maybe I'm just okay. digging, digging. But I did find it interesting that when Devin sat down with his mom, the first question that his mom, so she had sat down um, with Jen first Mm -hmm. and they had a really good conversation. Um, Jen was like pretty open about the fact that she's like, I'm not an overly emotional person, but I've gotten to a point where I've fallen for him. She wasn't like, Oh my God, I'm in love with your son. She was very like straightforward with her. She's like, yeah, I I find myself falling. And Jen um, and Jennifer, Devin's mom was like, I really like her a lot. I think she's, right for Devin. So she was very much a fan of Jen. But when uh, mom and Devin sat down, the first thing that Devin said is he's like, this has just been a really weird experience for me. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, mom, I'm over the moon. It was like, this has been a really weird experience for me. And mom's first thing was, I want to make sure your intentions are pure and that your heart is in the right place. And I found that to be it's strange. Very interesting. I found that to be strange because I feel like typically if you're in a situation where you're the parent and you're talking to the child, you're a little bit like, I'm really concerned that you're going to jump into this too fast, that you're just kind of flying off the handle and doing something erratic. I'm nervous that you're going to get your heart broken. I found it strange that mom said, I'm concerned about your intentions, basically that you're here for the right reasons. That's how I read it. And to me, that was a little bit of like, again, maybe I'm reading into it, but it felt like a window into mom knows her kid. Yes. And it's like, okay, Devin, are we doing this because we really love Jen or are we doing this to get attention on television? Yes, because usually it's the opposite. Usually, well, not the opposite. Usually it's one-sided. It's like mom going, you know, I just want to make sure that like you're you're basically protecting him and that you're not going to kind of like, you know, he understands what's yeah. at stake here. But she kind of did that to both of them. Being like, I don't know if I can trust either of you. <laughs> right? No, for sure. <laughs> Which but then it's like she doesn't she doesn't know Jen, so it's like I mean. makes sense. But with her son, that's for what the I'm first saying. question it's usually to towards be, the person coming into the home. Is your heart pure in the situation? Like, is an I interesting it's an interesting window yeah. to me. It was interesting. Yeah. So I right away wrote I was scribbling in my notes. I took note of that and I was like, I find that interesting because I don't feel like we've heard that from a family before. Because yeah. even Jeremy's next, which we'll get into, where mom was just like, kind of like, what are you doing? I know you. Both you're moms not were right. like, uh, but Jeremy's you know mom, Jeremy's mom wasn't like, are your intentions right, pure? It was right. more like, are you for real ready for this, Jeremy? 
Well, you know, you know, Devin's a salesman. Feels like it. He's, he's giving big salesman energy, and I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're good at sales, I'm sure that mom kind of sees him wheeling and dealing and smooth talking this and silver tongue in that, and so. I'm sure she can kind of go, hey, can we just like be real here? Like, is yeah. this one of these situations where you're just trying to win? Or is this a situation where you actually care about this person? You know, are you trying to position yourself into something else? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I do think, I will say, I do think that Devin does really like Jen. Yes, because he's do, nervous and we normally nervous. don't see this. No, I do think he really likes Jen. Now, I don't know if Jen, I think she likes Devin, but you know, she called him at the very beginning. She called him Dev Dog. Just like she had called Jeremy Jer Bear. Jer Bear and, and Dev Dog. Now, Jen, love you. If you're looking <laughs> to kill a vibe, do more of that. I will say, if you're looking to make a man feel possibly very friend zoned, continue to give them nicknames that are like that. But like we saw what happened to Jer Bear at the end of this episode. She called him Dev Dog. And I'm like, is she very much friends with Devin? And likes really being around him, but maybe doesn't have as much of the romantic draw yes. as some of she does maybe feel with Jonathan or Marcus. And Devin is a little bit like buddy I think vibes. Devin is but very, Devin really likes her I think a lot. Devin is very charming. Mm -hmm. I think he's very fun to talk to. I think he puts a lot of energy into her. It makes her feel really special. Yeah. And she is not really that into him um, like aura physically. That's the vibe I get. Okay. It's like the sexuality tension is not there naturally. It's been building over time due to like how much work. But he she puts like very her. much enjoys being around him. But she loves being around yeah. him. And but I think she feels more of a raw energy with some of the other guys. Okay. That's yeah. kind of what I feel. Okay. I'm yeah. feeling this too. I'm feeling this too. Well, at the very end, Devin, his mom tells him, she's like, you got to jump in. Mm -hmm. You can't be holding yep. back. You know, you got to take the risk, yep. which I found interesting that most all the moms were saying. Yeah. That. They were like, jump in, mm -hmm. do it. And, um, you know, he was like, he literally goes, fuck it. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so romantic. He is so fuck romantic. It, fuck you. it. Um, and she says that she really does see a future with him. Yes. She doesn't say that I love you back. No. Um, which we'll talk about the preview for next week episode when she's on her own accord tells Marcus she is in love with him. That's what I mean. I, I feel like that that raw connection. Yeah, I'll get it. We'll, 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 I'm gonna save. Until we'll I, get into I it. Feelings. But anyways, they're macking, yeah. and you know it ends well. But next we have Jeremy's hometown. The date. only one to say I love you. By the way, Devin, yes. only one, only everyone one else is like versions no, of my every, feeling, no, but no, like he everyone, just straight up goes, I love you. Everyone else said, I'm starting to fall in love with you, which is like the very beginning of Game yeah, of Roses would be like, we love need to discuss level at one. some point, like what are the levels? Like, is <laughs> well, there Game of Roses has a full lexicon oh, okay. of but, the but level as levels. a non-scientist, it's like <laughs> starting to kind of might soon. Yes. It's almost like what is starting to fall in love mean? Some people have like, what is love to them? You know what I mean? Like, you know, is it, man, I really like being around you. Is I'm starting to fall in love is, is falling in love. Starting to fall in love means like I picture you as my wife, but we're just not quite like ready to be, exclusive like it's such a specific thing but it's also so funny in my opinion to categorize something as a pre like i could <laughs> see myself being hungry in five hours as opposed to just waiting five hours and being like, I'm hungry. It's, 100%. it's such a weird thing to say. Like, yeah, you, you just get... finished a meal and you're like, I could see myself by dinner time <laughs> starting to feel hungry again. You're like, okay, I, I would love to, means. to hear the data on how how rare this hometown is that we're having three of the four men tell her they're falling in love with her yeah because that typically happens much earlier yes. typically hometowns is where we're way late in the game there's much more of a revelation they've said it before and they're reminding her like you know i i i i'm in, I'm in love with well you. there's usually one of the four Yes. That, that hasn't crossed the barrier into I love yes, you. Yes, but not it's the majority. It's usually three I love yous. Mm -hmm. One, I've been falling for you. I'm just not quite there yet. We have the inverse. I know. We have everyone going, I think Like soon, I said, I would love I to see, see in a year would, like me <laughs> liking you a lot. I would love to see the data. Yeah, even Marcus being like, I'm in between. I like, he said at the beginning, I really like her a lot. And I was like, I don't think we've heard... When was the last time we heard a guy at hometown say, I, like I really you. like her a lot? You should just Wild. say, you're dope. You're absolutely. You're sick. You're absolutely fire, girl. 
Gen Dog. <laughs> uh, but next we have Jeremy's hometown. Yeah. And Jeremy, we're in Connecticut. And I have to ask you, Evan. So we end up going to a supermarket later that is a, you know, d- near and dear to his heart. So I can connect with that a little more. Um, but why do they meet in an isolated, creepy area? You know what I mean? He said, we're going to walk around yeah, my park. Yeah, you're right. But we never saw them walk around the park. They just go straight to the They're supermarket. Randomly, like, and I'm like, why do we have to meet in such a scary area? And the fact that he always was saying to her, is this where you kill me? And then she said the reverse to him. Is this where you kill me? I was like, Jen had the right vibe in this yeah. date because where you took her, her saying, um, is this where you kill me? <laughs> Felt very organic. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was a little terrifying. Yeah. It's like, wait, did they drive out there? Was that next to the haunted uh, grocery store? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, so it was really weird. Grocery store wise. Yeah. Um, you know, I understand things are like sentimental for sure. I uh-huh. could get that when you were a kid. Uh, very scary. Very weird. It was very animatronic. Very Disneyland at night by yourself with no one around in a ride. It was you know. giving Five Nights at Freddy's for sure. Yes. But also it was simultaneously giving Chuck E. Cheese, which I hold near and dear to my heart. So... I could kind of connect with it because I was like, I do love these Chuck E. Cheese like animatronics singing at better me. Better than a run. That's what I'm saying. It's you know better I mean? than a run. Better than a run. You know, you can eat there. You're not dripping in sweat. And there is a connection of, I loved this place when I was young. You eat, literally IRL run into a family member there, like potentially your mom's twin, the aunt. Uh-huh. I could connect with this more. And it made me think, you know, maybe... If I was one of these men, I would have taken her to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> it's like, well, so yeah. it's kind of close to that. Yeah, and I think that that would be funny. If I took Jen to Chuck E. Cheese. Because it's kind of a joke, but this was kind of an in-between. Listen, I think I think it was a safe. Yeah. I think in any other season, it would have been the dud of the four. But I think that in this case, up against what everything else looked like, it was it was, it was a win. You know what I mean? So they got to eat all sorts of different foods, yeah. dance with some fake avocados. Like these are they were called the you know, avocado girls. Yeah, real creative. And they were singing, "We're avocados, we're avocados." I think Ember would have loved it. Yeah. Um, I feel like we got to go. But to it also creeped me out in a weird way. Like like w- if I worked there, having to close at night would be terrifying. And all of a sudden, it's like you hear just We're avocados. The avocado ladies, their eyes are glowing. Yeah, there's a there's a terrifying like there's no question <laughs> they come to life at night. There's no question that, that place is alive at two a.m. This is terrifying. Jeremy's like, we're gonna do a sleepover here. Yeah, see That's if we we'll make it out alive. It was it was definitely um, it felt like watching a fever dream, singing milk cartons, cows. I know I will say for, to Jeremy's credit mm-hmm. to make walking around a grocery store a good time. Yeah, they had fun. You got to you got to you got to have some fun together. Yeah, no, they right? you know Right, after a while it's like, okay, we're in the bread section. What's funny about this? Like at some they point ate, like They ate food together, which was nice. You know, they made a bouquet for uh Jeremy's mom. They took over responsibilities, cashier and bagger. I did feel bad for the customers. I'm like, you know that they're getting all of it wrong. Like, they're like, you I, charged I, me for four milks and I got one. And they're like, too too bad. Tough luck. Yeah, I don't watch this <laughs> fucking show. Why am I waiting? You know what I mean? Like, I got in the wrong line. And when Jeremy's aunt did show up, I do have to say it felt, it felt very real. Very real. Yeah, I agree. Like, the way that she came up, she wasn't mic'd, number one. Mm-mm. And number two. And she was uncomfortable. It was no, like, oh, hi. She ran up and she's like, hi honey yes. and ran away yes. i think they organically ran into his i aunt. completely agree and Small his shock town vibes. was like oh his shock my was god real. Yeah, yeah yeah so that was cute and it wasn't like mom it was like aunt you know so it wasn't even like that like my brother's here it was like aunt it was kind of random yeah. yeah but it was fine yeah it was a fever dream mm-hmm. but it was creepy, one of the best ones it was definitely one of the best ones for whatever this hometown mm-hmm. date choice was. Yes. Um, let's talk though about meeting Jeremy's family. Yes. Uh, but Very first, I'm going to take another quick pause. Family, this message is sponsored by Greenlight. So, Ember officially started third grade last week, and I cannot even begin to process the fact that I have a third grader on my hands now. Like, what is going on? Actually, Ember leading up to her first day of school kept looking at me did you notice her doing this to me where she would like kind of corner me stare into my eyes and be like so 
feel like crying. Yeah, she loves a reaction. She's like, did you feel like crying because I'm getting so much older yeah. now? And I'm like, first of all, you know me too well. Yes. <laughs> like, because yes, I feel like crying. And I'm like, stop is trying to make me cry. Sad that She's I'm like, older? is it sad yeah. that I'm cry. getting older? Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <"Never."> <laughs> um, but yes, I have been a ball of emotion. Uh, but if you're a parent, obviously you want to make this new school year an opportunity for your kids to learn important life skills and continue building independence. For that, I recommend Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. And parents can keep an eye on kids' new money habits. It's incredible and it helps develop financial literacy at a young age, which I wish that I had. They even have their chores feature that lets you reward your kiddos for honoring their responsibilities around the house. You can help kids get into their fall routine more easily than ever this way. Then there's also the Greenlight's Infinity Plan, which includes the same access to financial literacy education that makes Greenlight a valuable resource for millions of parents and kids, plus built-in safety to give you peace of mind. With Greenlight Infinity, teens can check in without needing to actually check in thanks to family location sharing. They can also call for help uh, when they need it with SOS alerts that connect them to family members, 911 or both. Uh, and there's even a feature that detects car crashes and will connect your young drivers to 911 dispatch, alert and emergency contacts if needed. The Greenlight Infinity plan really provides so much peace of mind. Truly, it's incredible. No matter which feature makes the most sense for your household, Greenlight is the easy, convenient way for parents to raise financially smart kids and for families to navigate life together. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash mom dad. That's greenlight.com slash mom dad to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash mom dad. Okay, so next we meet Jeremy's family. Yeah. Now Jen goes in concerned because she's like, I don't feel like I really know Jeremy that yeah. well, which makes sense because they really haven't spent no. too much time together. Um, and she's like, I can't quite decipher if he's actually ready to get there because we have so much fun together. Yeah. But the emotional connection, he just hasn't opened up. He's got a yes. lot of walls. He's got boundaries up. Now, I felt like on their one-on-one -on -one date that they did get into some deeper stuff yeah, for sure. Definitely. But it seems like they are more playful. And it yeah. also seems like Jen is feeling unsure about like, is Jeremy really in a space where he's ready? Yeah. And I think his family would agree. Yeah. Also, too, just from maybe I'm wrong. I'm so sorry. But from what we saw from him um, with like his cast bio and then what um, Chad and Lizzie told us that they saw that he's, you know, like real estate guy in New York and L.A. He's taking all the photos with all the famous celebs like he's in that life right now yeah. which doesn't necessarily scream i want to settle down and have a family this second well and even like his mom was like yeah i remember her on you know live te television saying what she wants and I remember think me thinking to myself it's definitely not jeremy <laughs> and they're like what does that even mean <laughs> like probably something you know someone like i think she said from what i remember maybe i'm wrong but from what i remember she was saying like i want someone who is funny who wants to have a good time da, 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 which is funny because, yeah, mom, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> because her, jen's like he's so funny and i think his family's like, no, like dud, he's the funny boring. one <laughs> but what was really interesting to me was like his overall like for me the family i felt like they didn't have an opinion they were actually much more confused why this was even happening i guess that, it's more the energy like the sister sits down like, the sister's here like the sister's super cool and she's just like i loved his family the sister's just like yeah so it's really nice to meet you like this is kind of a interesting like jeremy what are you thinking and then like mom's like she's like so, so my are you brother. good are you like are you sure this is like real <laughs> everyone's kind of like what it happened and then jeremy's response is wild she's like so how do you feel about this? You know, she feels like you're kind of maybe have some walls up. And he's like, that's weird. Yeah, I don't feel like I have any walls up. Like, I'm chilling. Like, she's super cool. And like, we're having a good time. And then the sister's like, yeah, but like, she's... you're supposed to get married in like a week. Like, is that happening? He's like, to be honest with you, like, we haven't gotten into, he literally said like, 
we haven't really gotten into like all the deep stuff, but like I'm happy and I'm just having fun. And, and it's he like, then was thrown off when his sister told him that Jen was concerned that he hadn't let walls down. He was like, well, I am worried to hear that because I have been. It almost just feels like his experience was like if I was like, if my brother was single mm -hmm. and like living in a different city and he's like dating someone apparently. And I'm like, how, how is that girl? He's like, Oh, she's chill, man. We're having a good time. Yeah. She's smelly. Anyway, I was watching this show and yeah. you're just like, you know, it was very just kind of like, Oh yeah, we're cool. Yeah. Everything's great. Go I'll kind of let you know whatever happens, but like not enough to kind of really like get into it and be like, dude, it's been actually been amazing. And like, it was very just like, Oh yeah. We just get like seeing how things happen. Like we're not exclusive or anything. Just having fun. Like that was the energy. Yeah, even when sister sat down with Jen, and this was where Jen begins to do the like, please let me know right, about right. your brother because yeah. I'm trying to figure him She's out. Like, do you know anything? Because I'm trying to yeah. figure it out. Like, I don't really. <laughs> Who's your brother? Just have like, fun, like grocery stores and stuff. Trying to trying to to figure out what the deal is, and she's like, "Do you think that he's ready?" And she's like, "Honestly, with this timeline, maybe not." Right. Um, but he, he wants to eventually, but like, I don't see this timeline. And then when Jen sat down with mom, mom was making me laugh so hard because she, then Jen asked similar questions. Like, so do you think that I'm right for Jeremy? And mom goes, I don't even know you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I like, I thought the mom was super sweet, but I love that she was super direct. It was pretty was iconic like where she's like, um, I, I don't know you, but I wish you well on your journey. <laughs> yeah, like you could be a psychopath. I don't know. I mean, like, I hope you're, you seem cool in the five minutes we've you had a glass lovely, of wine together. But like, but like, you know, we've had one glass of white wine and I just heard that my son apparently came in and his opening line was that he has a big penis. Mom's face when Jeremy said I have a big penis was a 10. You could tell that like mom and sister. Mm hmm are they do a lot of eye rolls with jeremy yeah it feels like mom they're and sister like, know <sighs> jeremy and they're kind of like they're like he's kind of an idiot <laughs> like that's the energy not like in a bad way just like uh like jeremy he's such an idiot anyway like that's the energy i get I from feel them. like mom and sister get jeremy's photos that he sends of like hey i just met billy eilish and exactly. they're like very nice jeremy yeah and he's and like, like he's like, always trying to kind of he's like here's me and dua lipa maybe she'll be my new girlfriend and they're like very nice jeremy yes but he, he sends it into the void like no one like he's always like dua lipa you know wasn't hot enough for me ha, 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 to the family chat everybody's just kind of like okay that's like a weird way to say that you meant to Ali, but I get it. You know what I mean? Whatever. You know, like my, he kind of like, I don't know. This episode was interesting for me. It, it kind of made me just get like the overall general ick of him. I yeah. Was you were like, saying that you got the ick of Jeremy. Something about I, him. I, I just enjoyed felt really him weird. on their date. Like I said, a yeah, million no, times I've been having guy. up and downs with Jeremy. I Very I, not open. Very not raw for this far in the game. I felt a little, you know what it was to be honest with you. I saw Devin mm -hmm. warring. I saw Jonathan warring. Mm -hmm. I saw Marcus obviously warring. Yeah. I saw nothing from Jeremy. Yeah. I saw Jeremy being like, we'll see how far I get. That kind of like this far, like to me. And that's why I felt like you're playing with someone's future a little bit. Yeah. I felt a little bit well, like. Well, mom said, she goes, this isn't a game show, Jeremy. Exactly. Like this is her life. I felt like he's auditioned for five or six of these shows. Yeah. This is the first one he got. He hit me as just kind of like, this is fun, whatever, no big deal. I'm probably not gonna make it all the way, but at least I kind of got far and get some new followers. Like it felt very, I'm not taking this seriously. Not a bad guy. Just that was like, how did you make it this far? You're yeah. not even into this. Jeremy was actually very much this episode giving me not the type of guy who should be on this show, giving me IRL dating guy who you go on so many dates with and doesn't ever become your boyfriend no just kind of like, you're like sweet. we've we've been on 15 dates now and we haven't had a conversation about like what we are right. and i'm trying to figure it out and you're a little bit like yeah we'll see or, like, he's I met, that guy. Or you're, and you're yeah, like we'll i met see. someone else and he's like no worries chill yeah and you're like, what? It meant nothing? Like, it's weirdly but like, like detached. But like after so many dates, yeah. you're just never going to get an actual definition no. from him of what you guys are. He's definitely been in like five-year relationships where like it never became exclusive. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, it's like, there's so many girls coming up being like, no, I was in a long-term relationship like, with Jeremy. And he's like, what? Like, what? I thought we were just chilling. Oh, okay. That was the energy yeah. for sure. And so the family definitely communicated that with Jen. Yeah, big time. Um, but I will say... Uh, Jeremy's mom was saying, you know, I think he could be ready 
it just depends on the right person, yeah, which I, I actually found. could be ready found, in 10 years, I think so. <laughs> but I did feel like that was a really, a powerful point that isn't yes. talked about a lot on this show, where the conversation is always like, is your child ready to get married? And so often, it's like, are you? Or do you just meet the person, the right person, right time? I truly do believe it's that. Because I see so many people where like they're dating people all the time and they're kind mm -hmm. of always in this like flex and whatever. And all of a sudden they meet a person and they're like, I'm so ready. Or yeah. like, or they get married in a year. And it's like, they've been dating on and off for a decade and all of a sudden they get married in six months. And you're like, what happened? Like, I'm right. at, you know what I mean? So, And I think it's very much like it depends on the, the person. Like Jeremy's yeah. mom said, she's like, I think he could be ready, but it's going to have to be the right person. Yeah. And obviously Jeremy likes Jen, but this process doesn't scream Jeremy to me. Jeremy needs more time. And I think Devin wouldn't include himself in this, but I think all the guys are that way. Yeah. They are not like there are some people who are like, I am so ready to get married. These four guys are not it. And yeah. A hundred percent. That's just because how I feel. Yeah, and and I feel like there's such a difference between saying I can picture my life with you. I'm starting to see a future with you versus I can't picture being without you. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know what I mean? Like, in, like cut that. Use that. In, in, Instagram inspiration. But truly though, 100%. if you meet someone that like blows your socks off, you're going to be like the idea of the, me not being around them. It sounds horrible. Versus I could think I could picture us being together in the future, and which is the I general vibe high, for her and everybody. But, you know, Jen then communicates with Jeremy that she's concerned that if he's, you know, if he's ready, if he's not ready, he says that he's ready for the right person. And he feels very strongly for her, she makes him feel very happy. He tells her that he is falling for her in his ITMs. He said that he's very confident about that. And Jen is walked away and is question markish. Yeah. Jen walked away and is like, I don't know how I feel about mm -hmm. it. So, spoiler, when she ends up cutting him later in the episode, it made sense to me. Yeah. When the emotion was so low for both of them, it was crazy. It was like, she was like, Really nice meeting. And he's like, it was, it's been great hanging oh, out with you. Oh, you mean when they wrapped Yeah, it was like, yeah, it yeah. was like they, they might as well have like shook hands. It yeah. was like, yeah, it was really great hanging out with you. She's like, yeah, it was like, cool. Yeah, all right, see ya. Bye. Yeah, and after then the hearing from the family, like, I mean, I guess he could be ready, but like, like really, huh? Jeremy's here? Like six weeks <laughs> yeah. ago, his obsession was meeting, you know, like J-Lo. And now all of a sudden he's like trying to get married. We know what the heck it just happened. <laughs> but anywho, um, then we move on to... Jonathan. Jonathan's hometown date in San Diego. Yes. Where for Jonathan's date, he took her um, to play lacrosse. You know what? I kind of dig this because, you know, if you're like have a huge passion and the other person did it as well, I will say I could see myself ignoring red flags if, just you know, for lacrosse no no i'm just saying if it was something you were really into and had fun <laughs> doing and then the person you meet is really into it as well yeah i could totally see being like this is very exciting because i like to spend a lot of time doing this sure so like you know what i'm saying it's like if if your passion was cars and you just love looking at cars all day and like that and then the person's like dming you cars back and forth yeah i could totally see being like a is this for real or are you just doing this because we this? like each other like it, i could see myself kind of sliding into that being like we both did it uh, is this a thing you this know this is the movement date that made sense to me. Yes. Because like they both said, it's kind of a rare thing to meet someone who played lacrosse in college and high school. And that's an interesting passion. You don't meet a ton of lacrosse players. So this one I got. Yes. This one was kind of like, it's okay. It's unique. Now, it's not like we both love running or we both love, you know, whatever. My, volleyball even. My only caveat is that they've done it already. He took her and did like a little one-on-one -on -one moment where they it's played a recycle. La lacrosse. It's and a I'm recycle. Like, you already did lacrosse. So let's like do something else. And there's a lot to do in San Not Diego. Not showing a lot of range. As a creative director, a little disappointed in him. Very true. He is a creative director. Like, it could have been a moment. Like, let's go play let's go get lacrosse. Lacrosse. 
<laughs> there's that. Let's go play lacrosse on the beach and then go to, you know, Jen loves animals. Let's yeah. go to, you know, a an, an area where maybe they're rehabilitating some of the seals in La Jolla and you can, you know, interact with some of the seals. Then we have a lacrosse on the beach. Like there's San so Diego? there's more that you can do. There's San so Diego much to do in San Diego. goes hard for like a lot of stuff to do. San Diego has an endless amount of options of things to do. Like I get if you're where was where was Jeremy? Connecticut. Yeah. I understand if you're in a place where it's like it's a little quiet sleepy. It's just a little like I have a grocery store I could take you to. Yeah, it's sleepy. But like San Diego, LA, those are places with tons of different things you could do. So to just go to a, a lacrosse field felt very like not Same thing with Houston. Houston's right. a huge city. Run, cl- yeah. So you're gonna uh, run in the obviously heat? they're trying to do like you know walk us through a day in your life energy yeah. and less of like a wow me. It's like you know I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to do the like if you live with me, this is what life could look like. But I, was, I, I agree, and I didn't think about the fact that he recycled the data. I hate that. <laughs> I got this one more though. Yes. Out of all the movement dates yes and i think you know what family i think why i'm a little angrier about it than i normally would be maybe i wouldn't even have noticed this as much before but it's because this show the entire time has never like spoiled jen as the bachelorette it's just like heights after heights after fucking heights making her do terrifying things i'm surprised i didn't do lacrosse in like a hot air balloon they haven't (laughs) they haven't done the pretty woman type of date they haven't done that let's take her out and get her like the perfume it's all very physical everything's very physical and i know she's an athletic woman but again the focus on the heights which she's so scared of i'm like let's spoil this queen she deserves to be spoiled let us spoil her so i think i really noticed it then during the hometowns where i'm like you're gonna just make her fucking move again let her just sit. She's talked about how she loves shot a clock. Like yes. do, a, do a cute brunch date somewhere. She's like, on there's the- no drinking and there's no fanfare. All I'm doing is basically working out and risking my life. Even like any of these places a really, you know how they have now these, um, these companies that set up like the gorgeous picnics that are yeah. like very, yes, 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 set yes. Up, have one of those gorgeous picnics set up with like, you know, a gorgeous, uh, umbrella and the, the tufts and the flowers mm-hmm. and do something stunning Bonfire like that. Bonfire on the beach vibes. Yes. yes. Come on. Have your friend play a cajon. Yeah. You know, instead, just, instead it's just like, let's work out again. It's like, God. <laughs> 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 let's get it more into jonathan but we have to take one more final pause um family like i mentioned just moments ago ember just started school Mm -hmm. last week but i think that we have some life changes coming Mm -hmm. up Mm -hmm. our family and um, maybe some location changes evan and i have been processing a lot lately brainstorming And when I learned about this next thing, I have to tell you, I was flooded with joy and excitement and relief about our family's future and specifically our kiddos' future. I'm talking about K-12 powered schools. K-12 powered schools are tuition-free online accredited public schools for kindergarten through 12th grade. We want to set our kids up for success, and that means making sure they are receiving the best education, one that's right for them and their needs. Let me say that one again, okay? One that is right for them and for their specific needs. So I highly recommend checking out K-12. We just recently dove into learning about Mm K-12 powered schools, and I am excited about it. I am excited. K-12 can help your child start reaching their full potential in life right now with online education options tailored to their unique needs, interests, and schedules. And there's still time to get started this year. Yeah, this is not your typical homeschooling where parents are responsible for teaching their children. K-12 powered schools have state certified teachers trained in online education with an online portal that gives parents daily insights into curriculum and performance. Uh, And K-12's hands-on innovative technology makes learning interactive and also engaging, helping your child gain skills, experience, and certifications all before graduating high school uh, while giving you the support you need to get them there. Mm -hmm. K-12 has online education options for every type of student and it could be perfect for your child too. Listen, all kids are different and all families are different and K-12 powered schools provides options for that fact from a family who's traveling constantly 
to a child who learns in a specific way and feels better at home. For so many reasons, K-12 powered schools are an incredible option. Help your child gain the skills they need to thrive in the future with K-12. There's still time to get started for the fall. Go to k12.com slash mom dad today to learn more and find a tuition free K-12 powered school near you. That's the letter K, the number 12.com slash mom dad. That's k12.com slash mom dad. Okay, so back to Jonathan. Um, I wanted to say that during the end of their lacrosse date when they were talking, it was another moment where I was like, and I said this in their last one-on-one, I do really appreciate Jonathan's honesty. Yeah. I really, really do. And like we said earlier, I trust him because he talked about with her that he was like, he acknowledges that he has walls. I feel like he's very good about being like, yes, I acknowledge that I have walls up. These are the reasons why, because of my past, because of my ex. I feel like I don't know if I can trust people, da, 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 da. But he told her, he's like, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm in love with you right now because I don't take the term lightly. And my worst nightmare is that I'm going to say that I love you. And then when you ask me why, I won't be able to thoroughly answer the question, which Again, in his past conversations with her, there have been moments where we're like, oh, that could kind of hurt a bit. Yeah. But number one, she handles it so well. Mm -hmm. She really does have like a threshold to be able to like hear truths mm -hmm. and process them and not be like spiraling. Right. But I appreciate the honesty that he's like, hey, instead of be doing the whole Sam M thing where he's like, no, I love you. And I can't tell you why, because love is just a feeling. Love you, bro. <laughs> love you. Love you, my guy. <laughs> He's just like, hey, I'm scared that if I say I love you, that I won't be able to thoroughly tell you why because I don't know you to that extent yet. I appreciated the honesty. I appreciate it as well. But we then meet his family. She knows all their names beforehand. Very impressive. impressive. Very, I was Could you quite imagine impressed. me? <laughs> no, you wouldn't remember a single person's name. It'd be, it'd be bro, <laughs> mom, dude, buddy. Everyone Evan will know someone for forever and forget their name. Like, I feel like sometimes I should wear a name tag around the house. I'm like, we, we're I'm getting like, to the point Jessica. of the family should start wearing. It's Jessica. <laughs> yeah. Birthdays. Forget about it. You know what I mean? Outside of like my immediate people who live inside my house. I don't know a birthday. It's my memories shot. I'm so sorry. But Jen crushed. She really crushed it. Yeah. Um, He's one of the ones he wants the reassurance from his family. He lets us know that. Now, I would like to make a comment about the family. They're talking beforehand and they're like, do you think we're going to be able to tell? Will we know? And some of the family members are like, oh, I guess maybe after talking to him for a while, I'll know if he's feeling her. And his sister-in-law, so his brother's wife is the one who right away goes, oh, I'll know immediately. <laughs> and you looked at me and you're like, huh? I'm like, well, we had to rewind because I was like, wait, is that his sister? Because it was, it felt like so, so like this is my person. Yeah, and, I and I'm know like, wait, him. you're the in sister in law, and, and you kind of like, I'll know him immediately. And, and she took over the whole kind of general meeting too. It was like, she here's was our story, and like here is what he, how he totally is, and da, da da da. And it was just a little bit like, wait, you're the you're the sister in law. <laughs> like, this is a little weird. Like, what it was giving me, I would bet my entire life savings on the fact that sister in law is who nominated him for the show. Mm. That's what it was screaming to me. Sister-in-law put his hat, his name in the ring for the show. And so she was like, this is my moment on television. I love the show. So I'm going to be the one to be like, so Jen, Jonathan, tell us all about your relationship. Well, I'd like to tell you about our relationship and I can relate to you. And she did end up telling them about the fact that her and Jonathan's brother, after meeting on Tinder three dates in, said, I love you. And then they've been married or they've been together for seven years. Yeah. But they also didn't talk about like, you know, how long was I on Twitter? How? Tinder. <laughs> oh, yeah. How long was I on Tinder? How many dates have I gone on? What's my life look like? Also, you know, and, and maybe, maybe, and maybe production, you know, did her dirty and like edited it to make it look like she took over. But I will say, I'm not trying to talk shit, but the energy between them two was like, He's allowed to speak when I say he's allowed to speak. He was kind of just like shuddering in the corner. He spoke a lot when he, he was did. talking with Jen he and did, the but two they of them were together. That. You know what I mean? There was a there was a little bit of this like you 
I don't know. I just, I, it was just like for an in-law to be like the one who's like speaking on behalf of everyone and him was a little strange to me. Um, I also maybe kind of in a bit way felt like she's kind of like, yeah, it's amazing. You find your person and, and you can get married in six weeks. If you tell them that's what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a lot of energy coming from someone who wasn't like directly i don't know it was just kind of funny to me and it was, it was funny just... too because it was like well yeah in three dates they said i love you but jonathan and um jen this is their second date technically. so technically we're better so technically than, yeah. they yeah, have yeah. one more on yeah, them and true. there was not an engagement I, i'm like i'd like how long did they say until they got engaged it was numerous months yeah. so it's similar mm -hmm. but i did appreciate the fact that she was like we get it. Uh -huh. You don't sound wild and crazy to yes, us because right. we understand. It was sweet. Um, but then when the brother and sister-in-law sat down with Jen, he had like tears in his eyes almost yeah. immediately. And he's very soft-spoken. Very sweet. And he was not giving a lot out, but he was just like, I don't know. He is my younger brother, so I feel protective. But like, are you falling for other guys? Jen, again, I respect her so much. So very honest. Yeah. With all of these families, I felt like she was very vulnerable to ask all of them, like, please tell me about your yes. son, mm -hmm. your child, your brother. Please tell me, are they ready? And also, I'm not going to serve you a load of bullshit. Yeah. And give the, she wasn't giving PR answers. Right. She wasn't like, I do really, really love him. Right. And yes, it's challenging, but like my eyes are really set in his direction. We'll see what happens. Right. She was like, yeah, there are a lot of guys. And mm. I don't know quite know how I feel about him at this moment because honestly, he's had his walls up a lot. Yeah. And even with other family uh, sit downs where she was like, you know, I've heard that you guys don't do really great in relationships. <laughs> that was gnarly. Yeah, when she told Devin, she's like, Devin's mom, it was funny. Yeah, yeah, but like, I really respect the fact that she wasn't giving these like loaded PR answers. Yeah. She was very real and it was just uh -huh. like, yeah, this is kind of how I feel and I'm not going to serve you a load of bullshit. I'm yeah. just going to be real. So she was like, yeah, there are other guys, you know, da, 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 da. but he just wasn't giving, brother was not giving her a lot. Mm -hmm. Brother was like, mm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about John. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get teary eyed. Yeah. Um, but then when mom and Jen sit down together, you know, they're having the serious conversations. But at the end of it, mom is like, I think Jen is adorable. She's smitten with Jonathan. And then when she sat down, when mom sat down with Jonathan, she was like, I adore her. And I love the fact that she didn't bring up your looks once yeah. when I asked her, which, by the way, is a side note that shows I mean, obviously Jonathan's gorgeous, that that's something his mom probably notices a lot with women all growing up. Like that the girls were always like, he's so hot, he's so hot, he's so hot. And mom was like, I love that she didn't even bring up your looks yeah. one time. Yep. But that mom cool. is like in on Jen. Yes. Mom really likes Jen a lot. Um, and same same moment with, with Jonathan and his sister. Where his sister was like, you know, you got to play big to win big. Like, put I like that. Out there. I like that because it was almost like a, hey, I know you've been hurt, but like, this we got one life, go for it. Yeah. Like, what's the point of playing everything safe? You're not going to really ever find it. So I, I appreciated that as just a comment. His sister, there was something about his sister yeah. that you and I both were like, there. I loved her energy. energy. We saw her briefly, but I was like, there's something. About, his, Jonathan's family overall, specifically his mom and his sister, yeah. I loved uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. I really enjoyed them. They seem like quiet confidence, but like also this kind of like strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A thousand percent. But you know, mom tells Jonathan, I know you've been hurt, but sometimes you just got to close your eyes and, and jump in Yeah, yeah. at some point. Cause mm -hmm. this is after he was like, please tell me, should I be yeah, with what her? Should I do? <laughs> and so then he ends up telling her, he's like, Jennifer Tran, I am falling for you. She says the same. They Mac. Yeah. I really, really like him a lot. Me too. I really like Jonathan a lot. I really enjoyed his family. He's my pick for her out of these group of men by a mile, but I do not think he is ready. He feels... He's ready to be boyfriend. Yeah. I don't think he's ready to he be... He feels the youngest to me. Does he that does. make sense? Yeah, he does. I don't know if he is or not. He I feels youthful. Check his age, but he feels young. Mm -hmm. He feels like 24. He feels, he feels like a youthful. guy who's kind of like... I'm a sweet, serious person who mm -hmm. does want to marry my wife and I don't want to date as much anymore kind of energy. Yeah. But at the same time, like, is young. Yeah. I don't know what it is about him, but, like, it just feels a little younger than everybody else. He does. There's there's kind of a bright-eyedness about him, yeah, too. Yeah, there's a, like, hey, I'm just living my life and I'm excited. 
I don't know. There's not, I'm not getting like super serious person in regards to like, I'm ready to settle down. It's almost like concept over mindset. Like, I think he's ready to be good boyfriend. Yes. I'm re- I think he's ready to like lock in. As, like, I think an amazing he's ready boyfriend. to be an amazing boyfriend to Jen. Now, but I don't see him being like a father is, in a year. You know no, what I mean? The it's question just, is, is Jen, would Jen be okay with walking away with just like an official boyfriend right. and not an engagement? And I don't know because she seems pretty like, there's an engagement at the end of this. Yeah. Like, let's talk about if they're ready, if they're ready. I think she wants to get engaged, but I don't think Jonathan's there, which makes so me nervous because he is the one who I'm like, okay, I see him wanting Jonathan. to be there, but not being there. Yeah. 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 And also it might be, yeah, it's a life age thing to yeah. work. I mean, like, I don't think he's very old. He's what, yeah. probably like 27, He seems like a good guy. He seems like a very like good a guy. Like a good guy, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, next up, we have the last hometown date, which is with Marcus in Tacoma, Washington. Hometown date would be (laughs) a real liberal, you know, term there. Now, taking you to a disgusting (laughs) little area. It was disgusting. It was like rocks and like muck up against like a little river area kind of looks like the beginning of every crime doc you know how they like they pull up and they're like this body washed up and then there's like four detectives and they're like talking about it and they're like we've seen four of these this week you know what i mean that's that's where they shot those cameras like, was it, it was not it was not sandy it was not relaxing he's like clunking over the rocks walking to her they walk to a bench i guess and then like sit and kind of look out at like a slimy vibe like it was not it was not, it, it wasn't a date. It wasn't a play. Like, I, I just didn't understand it. Of all the places, you, like, you could see in the background the gorgeousness. There was, like, bridges and Maybe trees. Hike would have and been then they nice. went to, like, where, if like, fish move. guts are walking up. You were just kind of like, this is kind of gnarly. When they first met there, I thought it was going to be another Jeremy moment where I'm like, oh, they're meeting by a body of water and then they're going to go somewhere else. Um, yeah, because so at least when, there's like a tr- like that was crazy. They walked to a bench and sat there, and at the bench, he did not have a blanket, champagne, you know, pastries, nothing. It they was didn't just, go to the favorite restaurant. They didn't go to the place where he, I mean, uh, an equinox. You know, like, like, since they're so into working out all the time, like you know, an equinox. The there local. wasn't even like a here's a a little jacket for you. Like like Jonathan had the jersey. It's like it's not even like a hey here's a special. Uh, here's a special blanket that I picked up from the local store to remind you of your time here. There was nothing, okay? Which to me... They didn't go in the harbor on a little boat and cruise around. Nothing. It was a mirror, though, of where Marcus is at. Marcus is like, I know I'm on this show, and I know that I'm supposed to be ready to be in love at this point and propose. I don't think I want to be here. I feel pressured in this moment. I'm not in the headspace to be planning a date for my future wife. That's what it gave me. It's like, I'm not thinking about yeah. it because I'm not thinking about being ready to propose to someone in like two weeks. If you take, a, I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick here. If you take away his handsome looks, I I don't see, like, there's no, where's the thing? Like, he's not making her laugh. They're not being fun together. It's very serious, very yeah. intense. And... There's no like creativity in regards to the way that he moves. There's no like, I'm going to take you on this cool date. There's no, I'm going to make you laugh. There's nothing. It's literally just like sit there, kind of seriously talk about their relationship. Is it just that she's like insanely attracted to him? It must and it's be. Just because blinding? because it's you and I, what is the thing? We, we've we been talking about this now for the last few weeks. I mean, honestly, since their first one-on-one date, you and I were both like, yeah, you know, don't really see their connection or chemistry. We thought he'd be gone fairly soon um obviously he's a very handsome guy but we must be wrong because to be quite frank out of all of these dates it seemed like this was the one she was the most she invested seems the in. most smitten with him i think she's the most like love struck by him either. yeah not even smitten yeah it's i like guess the, you're the, right the, it's one of the first times we ever saw jen cry in this entire yes. series and then we get the the clip from next week where she's telling him, I love you before he ever says it to her. I don't know if we've seen it before I where she, complete. the lead is saying, I love you. And he's like, I am not there yet. She is like, I guess we've been missing something because she seems to be very much into him. And I don't know what I'm missing, but I guess, I guess for me, I just, I don't see it. So maybe I'm just not connecting with it. 
but it's there clearly maybe yeah i don't know because it's like sam and him i don't even see the connection there even you mean with sam yeah, well i'm just saying like they're so different even in yeah. the way that they talk but i guess there's kind of this like not a lot you know what it, maybe she's just likes guys who aren't very good with words yeah like, it's, it's maybe kind she of likes like, kind of co- like a little bit more like sit back with my looks and just kind of float well if i, I don't know i wonder if it's almost a chase thing too because it's the guys who the, are they're not giving back much the most true and so there's this like feeling of wanting to you know it's like you want what you can't have type energy and it's like sure. oh, i like the chase and so the fact that we see her in next week's episode telling him that she's in love with him and she knows where he was coming from this episode where he's like i could barely get out the words that i'm falling for you that there must might be that urgency when you do like somebody, but then it makes it even more mysterious that like when he's you get not a little more so when out he's of them. not giving much. Maybe that's kind of the type is like, well, let's be real here, Evan. Let's think about what she said before. She's never had someone tell her that they're in love with her before. That's true. And yet she's been in numerous long term relationships, which means that the guys that she's been in relationships with were couldn't say I love it's almost you like she likes after emotion- however long. She likes em- emotionally unavailable people almost or something where it's like, I kind of like the like, can I get something Interesting out of Interesting because we saw a few weeks ago in a preview, I think it was her brother say, you always go for emotionally unavailable guys. Whoa, there you go. Because it makes sense. Those are the two least emotionally unavailable guys. Yeah, it's Sam there. and Marcus. Yeah. For sure. No, that's very true. That's interesting. They, they don't give anything. It's hard to ever know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like super interesting. That is interesting. And what is interesting too as well is that Marcus has given a lot in the sense of himself but not them yes him opening up about a lot of like the traumas and a lot of really private parts of his life that maybe he doesn't share normally with people even though again the caveat is he doesn't seem comfortable doing it and it's almost like the show is pressuring that but no there's not but none of it's it's between them it's all between them well sam well here's my story here's my thing here's what i've been going through here's what i'm looking for yeah marcus here's my story here's what i'm going through here's the trauma i've been through yeah. But neither of them were like, here's the reasons I like you. That's very true. That's very true. Well, we find out that um, we're going to meet his little sister. His adopted parents aren't going to be there. But Scott and Sue, who were kind of like parental figures when yeah, he was like a, a young ranger, vibes, like yeah. mentor energy, will be there. They show up to a very, very cool house, very nice home. Yeah. Overlooking very bougie the water. home. Um, and it is a full party. The house, by the way, is giving twilight to me. We're, we're, it's, it's in That's Washington. Yeah, it was twilight. And it was very twilight-ish from the outside. And I was like, we're good. I'm, it's like giving rich, twilight. Twi- rich Washington people. Yeah, the vampires, yeah. you know. Um, but there's a full party of friends waiting. Yeah. I don't know if he planned this out or if he vibe. was surprised by it. I like a very like it was run club. It was giving run club. It was like, are these people our friends? Like it was just kind of like strange. See, I didn't feel that way. I felt like it was definitely like, oh, you could tell that they were all of his friends. There okay. were just a lot of them. I'm like, Marcus has five times more friends than I've ever had. He's got tons of friends. God. Now, I don't know if it was a surprise for Jen or excuse me. I don't know if it was a surprise for Marcus or if he was planning on having them then there and then like surprised Jen. Like, I'm telling you, you're just going to meet my sister and Sue and Scott. And then here's like 25 people very overwhelming if i was jen i'm like it's too many people yeah it was I a d- lot and i don't know how to handle all of this and like you could tell it was like yeah the sister looked uncomfortable a little bit in it too like it the sister like was the kind sister of sitting there like the not people. quite not really talking to anyone it was just a it, it felt a little disconjointed to me it felt yeah. a little strange um his best friend was a lot there's a lot of energy coming off his best friend <laughs> sure. no hate just kind of this guy that seems like he's he says a lot. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, you know, that's it. Maybe Mark, I mean, Mark, uh, Marcus says very little. His yeah. friend says a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I could get that combo. Um, but yeah, just a, just a, I guess just not what you're kind of waiting for. You know what I mean? Definitely like, whoa, what, what, what is it all this? Just be like, like, like a lot I, of energy in the room. A lot of people going, surprise. And Marcus doesn't seem like lead, that guy. If I was the lead, I'd be like, this is a time where I want to get to know more about you and yeah. sit down and have like private conversations personal conversations and there's 25 people in this room and i feel a little overwhelmed yeah but anywho we end up seeing conversations with you know marcus and scott 
And Marcus is saying, I'm in between the like and the love, but I've just put all this pressure on myself. Um, and I feel like I'm not at this point yet and I'm feeling shame and I don't think I'm there and I don't know what to do. And Scott was like, if anyone's going to be like overanalyzing the situation, it's going to be you. And even we see later with his sister where his sister says something like, well, you know, Marcus, someone just handle his stubbornness, how yeah. clean he is. Here's the deal. Marcus <laughs> that is- That was a great little funny jab, like in his yeah. over the top clean house. <laughs> like Marcus is, seems like a very, very type A person. Obviously, there is so much trauma. So, of course, the opening up and vulnerability, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And again, I've said it over and over and over and over again, but I don't feel like in this space, it's maybe for someone who has been through that trauma and maybe hasn't worked on it through a lot of therapy yet, because the conversations that we're having over and over again with Marcus is like this. These would be great conversations to be had with a therapist and this is a very high stress, quickly moving environment that might not be for you. And when you're starting to feel shame about not feeling ready, again, we see the guys all later. The guys all get together at the end and talk about, you know, where they're at with Jen. By the way, the guys fully lied. All the guys were like, we are there. And we're like, no, we saw yeah. you guys all like mere days yeah. ago, not knowing how you felt. Okay. Yeah. You're all just trying to be like, Mr. Like I'm the main guy in charge and I got Jen and we're perfect. No together. doubts. Devin was talking a lot. Um, but Marcus, then we saw him spiraling and he was crying and he's just like, I'm not there. I'm not there. I feel behind. I feel behind. And it felt very much more to me more than again, feeling the emotion of like, I think I'm falling for this girl and seeing other people fall like faster and their relationships be more solidified makes me feel nervous because I love her and I'm trying to get there. I felt like more of the fixation was, I feel shame. Why am I not there yet? It w it felt more militant. Yeah. Like I, I'm supposed to be Interesting. in this space, in this process yet, and I'm not. So now I'm upset with myself. It yeah. felt less about Jen and more about Marcus struggling with his own internal battles mm. and insecurities and process and it feels like it's very much about his inward struggles that he has is going to have to work through which has kind of been the entire season right versus like i really really this girl is everything to me and i don't know why i'm struggling it was like i like her i might be in love with her i'm feeling really ashamed that i'm not at mark five yet where i should be on my report card in this bachelorette process you're That's what it felt right. like to me. It, you're absolutely right. And I feel like Marcus is the poster child for yeah. most of the guys. Oh, for sure. Like all the guys are struggling with that on a lower level. But again, it's it's rarely like it's like Marcus is like the severe version mm -hmm. of what everyone is going through. I yeah. feel like everyone even like is talking to the family, talking with her, talking with everything with how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. No one's talking about Jen. I know. It's so weird. No one's going like, Jen makes me feel this way. Jen reminds me of this. Know, Jen makes me guys. feel like the future is bright. It's all, am I ready? I don't know how I feel. Honestly, I've gone Jeremy was the most about Jen, yeah, where true. he was like, she makes me feel really good. Yeah, but yeah, it still yeah, was yeah. about but him, again, I guess. Like, I'm feeling good right now, which is like <laughs> the extent. But it's, it's all how I'm feeling. None of them are talking about her. Marcus is the extreme version of it, where it's like he has so much trauma and so much stored up, where it's like he's struggling to be present and be in the moment. You know what I mean? And you could see his sister... His sister seemed to be like almost like a mentor to him at this point where it's like she yeah. has clearly done a lot of work. You mm -hmm. could tell that she kind of had this like, yeah, we've gone through a lot. And um, but, you know, Marcus, here, here's how you need to think about this. And da -da -da. I don't know. It was really interesting. Like she seemed really like, oh, got in a bit of a hold on where she's at. Mm -hmm. Marcus just really feels like the guy is just has a lot of work to do before he's even thinking about this journey to be honest with you it yeah. just seems like almost like he applied for the show and then all of a sudden he's in it and he's ripping and he's like she loves me and i'm like whoa and, and i can't imagine because of the trauma that we've heard is yes is it has nothing to so do horrific. with horrific yeah but it's just more again on a level of this type of show where it all is happening so fast like very few people are in a space where they can function in that yes. quick of a you know of a situation of a journey if you will um 
I will say though, when Jen sat down with Marcus's sister, yeah. that's then when I went like, oh shit, I think Evan and I were wrong because I've been feeling like, I'm like, I don't really see the chemistry. We see Jen break down. She ta talks to Marcus's sister, Gabriella, about, hey, I know there's a lot of trauma. I've also been through a lot. We share that in common and we have that together. Um, but, you know, I'm struggling with not knowing how he's feeling. She essentially was like, I love him. And I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Yeah. And I'm scared because I can't read where he's yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. And she starts bawling. Now, to me, there's one of two options. Either Marcus is the guy that she wants to end up with. And it's like, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Or two, the only other thing I could think of was Marcus's sister had this energy. She had like such gentle eyes. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of one of those people when she's looking at you and she's like really listening and like, softly asking you questions she could make me cry too right you know when you're in the certain, presence certain of someone vibe, yeah. where their like gentle energy brings up your emotion because you feel safe yes yeah yes she she had a very Big, safe, safe vibes, energy yes. and so i'm like maybe that's why the you know the weeks of the the hometowns and all all of the build up all of a sudden jen it's hitting her and she's I don't crying think so. I, think, I think she's like I massively she, into him i think she's massively into him too um, well, you know, after the conversation, though, with his sister, Marcus says, you know, they love you and the way they feel about you is an extension of how I feel and I'm falling for you. Yeah. He said he's falling for her. But again, the conversation beforehand was that they liked you. They're an extension of me. So I'm falling for you. It felt very early days vibes early days yeah. and also very question like questionable and then when we have the boys beer time before yeah. like i was mentioning um the rose ceremony which we've never had before yeah it was very weird it was very uncomfortable, was very uncomfortable. where you're like you guys are supposed everyone, to sit here and talk about your guys' experience it was like a dick measuring competition <laughs> it was literally <laughs> like so how much do you like her? oh i like her so much no doubts oh me too no doubts and then and then marcus being such like not the salesman. Yeah. He's just like, I don't know. I'm really struggling with this whole thing. And I don't know if I can do any of this. You guys too? And they're like, no. Nope. He like, literally said what he goes. So yeah, I don't know if you guys are feeling the same way. And it was dead silence. And Devin just goes, I have zero doubts. And he's like, totally. Uh, <laughs> spiral. Like, dude, this is not a church group. You know what I mean? This is a, this is like your competitors. I do have to say to Marcus's credit, he is being truthful. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's not lying no, yeah, about yeah. how he feels sure, sure. to his credit. I just wouldn't like, you know, give the, her other boyfriends any ammo. It's <laughs> that's not, that's not the safe space to tell them. Um, but yeah, he mentions the shame again. What's wrong with him? How is he not getting there? I thought, so we get to the rose ceremony. I looked at you. I said, he's going to leave. I oh, was convinced were, he was going to leave. I thought you were so right. I thought he was gone. Like, there's no way he's not going to pull her aside and be like, Jen, I care about you, but like, I'm just not there sure. and I have to go. Because he was a spiral city. Yeah. But she comes up looking gorgeous. Yeah, it was that like. That outfit was everything. It was like Belle of the Ball energy, yeah. Marilyn Monroe yeah. vibes, like looking stunning. First rose goes to Devin. Yeah, that was a lock. Second to Jonathan and third to Marcus. Yeah. Marcus does not leave. And Marcus doesn't hesitate. He doesn't go. Uh, he just goes, yeah, I'll accept this rose. No question. Yeah. Well, then Jeremy's gone. And like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no worries. There were no tears. He was like, was I like, had the best time. She almost was like, like, just like dabbed her up. Like, yo, bye. see you later. Nice meeting you. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if we've been missing it the whole time. And she is like so all in on Marcus. And the reason that the goodbyes have not been difficult for her is because she has her sight set from day one on like Marcus yeah. or one of the guys, but it seems like it's Marcus. And so it's a little bit like, okay, bye everybody. I'm feeling emotional about potentially losing Marcus, mm. but like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, next week, everybody, like we keep saying, she tells Marcus she's in love with him and he's like, I'm not there yet. And he's my like jaw crazy. was on the floor, but we also have Jonathan starting to trip out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do this. Devin, I don't know if yeah, I can do that? this. what is that? Devin's weird. Because like, we haven't just... seen, unless they've been cutting it, we have seen no doubts from Devin the entire time. No. When the ex was about to show up, Devin was completely out. That's true. But I just mean like his feelings for her. 
I think he has been have been if they've been cut or whatever. I feel like he's been one of the most like vocally sure on the situation. But trust and believe if Devin finds out that she told Marcus that she was in love with him, Devin could be the guy who's That's like, true. I'm leaving. That's true. That's and he true. threatens to leave or like, I can't do this. He also, without even hearing about the fact that Marcus was told that by Jen, just the idea now that she's having fantasy suites with other girls. I'm telling you, I get energy from Devin that he's a little possessive. Yeah, yeah. And I think this this fantasy suite situation might turn the corner for him where he's like knowing that she's spending the night with two other guys and all of a sudden he's like, I don't know if I can be with you anymore and I think I'm going to leave to see if she is going to be like, no, I'll give it all up for you. Mm -hmm. I think he might play that fucking card that sometimes people do where they make the the threats of I'm going because yeah, I want this. my way. Yeah. I want it my, my way. way. <laughs> Love you all. Love you, fam. Um, just another <laughs> reminder again. Uh, this is our only episode this week yes. because next week we will have on Wednesday the Fantasy Suite episode and then on Friday we will have the Men Tell All episode coming out. And then we got the finale. And then we have to do cast bios for Jones season, which I'm so excited about. So excited. And then we got Jones season. It's, I mean, it is just packed and good. Love it's packed and good. We love you love all. Love you all. We'll see you next week, okay? Wow. <laughs> Bye.